I was recently pondering and thinking about creating a video about exposure and photography. And in doing my research, reading those blog posts, going onto those websites and watching all those videos, it occurred to me that surely there's no such thing as correct or right exposure. Because exposure is subjective. It's about you, the artist, taking the picture. And just because the textbook or somebody else says your exposure needs to be this or it needs to be like that or the histogram needs to be in a certain position surely that can't be right because if you follow those textbook rules then you're not going to be creating art or different art to somebody else and you'll just be doing what everybody else has done but still um, I'm going to try at least to give you my view on what exposure is for me and how I get the exposure for my images but what I'm not going to tell you is how to get your exposure correct or your exposure right because that's up to you so you've got your new camera or you've got an old camera that a member of your family owned once and you found it in the closet and you start taking photos and you've got your camera on auto and that's really good that's amazing that you're doing that and what you'll probably find is your pictures are coming out really well and you're getting your shots exposed really nicely the 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 light in your pictures is great and perhaps 90% of your images have come out really well uh, and that's awesome so if that's happening to you well done and keep it up because that's that's exactly what you want to be doing and once you've used your camera quite a lot in auto you might want to be a bit more creative and you more than likely want to come out of auto and you're probably going to use your camera in aperture priority and if you do that that is amazing that means that you're becoming more creative you're thinking about your depth of field you're thinking about having a, a blurry foreground or a blurry background or trying to get your image in acceptable focus the whole of your image from back to front and if you get that far you're doing fantastically well with your photography because it shows that you're trying to just take that step further you may even be a little bit more creative and or equally creative and new shutter priority in which case you're starting to think about trying to freeze the motion in your images or even blur the subjects in your images and if you do that and move on to shutter priority then once again that's amazing then you're really starting to think creatively and your pictures are probably getting a really nice new dynamic the one thing that auto aperture priority and shutter priority are having in common is that the camera sets the exposure the camera decides how your image should be exposed and that's fine because most of the time the camera gets it right and what the camera does it tries to even out your image to 18 percent gray because your camera sees in black and white it doesn't see in color like we do it sees in black and white it tries to make your image 18 percent gray and that's usually spot on and it's usually what what we need for our images but if you want to be slightly more creative or if you want to have a a much lighter shot or a much darker shot then you need to make a little bit more effort in setting your exposure and this is something that I do quite a lot but in truth I mostly shoot my images in manual so that means I set my shutter I set my aperture and I set the ISO that I use anyway but if you use those semi-automatic modes then you do have the facility to change your exposure a bit by using exposure compensation and what I'll do I'll demonstrate on my um, camera exactly how I do that and what I look for and hopefully you can replicate what I'm doing or you probably already do it and you can see exactly how that works so here I've set the camera up to take a picture of this row of white cottages and uh, I'm facing the sun so the what I was hopeful was to get a white uh, background just to sh show you something interesting so what I'll, I've set the camera up I've set this camera this Canon up to f8 and it's given me an ISO 100 I mean aperture priority and as you can see uh, if I um, want to darken this scene I just press this AV button here and I move the dial down and it's darkened the image by one uh, um, at one stop and that's that's fine that'll make it darker however because it's a white background because it's a there's a 
there's a white wall that's half the image. If I darken that image, the, the, the camera will try to change that image to make it 18% gray. So it'll turn that white uh, wall into a gray wall. And I don't really want that to happen. It'll be especially gray if I darken the image. And I've just done that by pressing the AV button and scrolling along. So what I would definitely do in this circumstance is brighten this image by one stop. Uh, and because I'm on a tripod, I'm, I'm F8, and I'm not worried about the light, uh, then I, I should be all right. So I'm going to take this image, and we'll have a look at this image. Give me one fifteenth of a second, and uh, I've got one stop over. So that's the that's the picture, and that's the image. So I've really got, as you can see, uh, the row of cottage with a white wall as a negative space. Now, if I took that picture again, but darken it and do the opposite of what I've just done, and then you'll see the difference between a white wall, in this case it's not terribly white, but what would be a white wall and a uh, um, uh, uh, compared to a grey wall. And it's given me one sixtieth of a second in this instance. So I'll take that picture and we'll look at both of those uh, together after I've processed them in Lightroom. But that's the first thing. So you just change the exposure compensation just by using the dial on your camera. The other end of the spectrum is trying to take a picture of something dark and I'm looking at this sort of dark almost black doorway which is a bit faded and if I took a shot with the standard exposure the camera gives me that may well come out quite grey. So in this instance what I would do with this shot is underexpose by one stop as I've got here and that should give me a much darker richer black um, colour than, than if I would have I've left it white and we'll take two pictures and we'll compare both pictures now. So here's the first one of that doorway uh, with the bricks, etc. And I'll just now do one where I've underexposed it by one stop and we can compare the difference between the two images. It's a 10 second self timer, so it does take a while. So that looks very grey on the back of that camera compared to uh, as it should be, which is, which is quite dark. Thanks very much for watching the video. I really wanted to demonstrate exposure and in particular exposure conversation when it comes to light and dark subjects and how it's useful to not go with the exposure the camera gives you and potentially in some instances overexpose your image or underexpose just to get the colours right or to get the greys right. Otherwise you end up with the, uh, the wrong tones if you like or not the tones you want as the photographer, as the artist. Once again, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's been helpful. And if it has, why not give it a like? And if you would like this content I'm trying to create, then why not subscribe to the channel? That'd be brilliant. Uh, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheerio.